All right. This, this is an old video of Lindy Beige. We talk about sex power, why women were different and men were expendable. Of course, he's wrong. So we will talk about that. Let's hear about this from him. Evolutionary psychologists have done a lot of work looking at societies around the world and seeing how labor is divided between the sexes in them. And uh, they've noticed quite a bit of variation, of course, but actually striking patterns that are perhaps more striking than the variations. Now, there are some tasks that are pretty much uniformly done by men. Uh, for example, anything that's dangerous. So if a job is likely to kill you or maim you, you're probably a man doing it. So if you want people to be lumberjacks or miners or sailors or soldiers, then you get a guy to do it. And how do you get a guy to do a dangerous job? Easy. Tell him it's manly. Uh you are wrong. Men are punished if they do not do these jobs. They get ostracized, but also they get deselected from the girls. If you want a wife and there's a dangerous job that one of you has to do, and she looks at you and says, you're not doing it, she leaves you. Well, she doesn't become your wife in the first place. Men don't do this because they've been told they're manly. They do it because they have no choice. Um, another job that's done almost exclusively by women is looking after children, particularly small children. And I think it doesn't take a genius to work out why that is. Um, but maybe something... Yeah, because it's a safe and easy job. That's why. And women hoard it for themselves. How many male daycare workers do you see, Mr. Beige? Hmm? Something you haven't thought of is that there are hormones in in the brain which reward people for doing stuff and women get different rewards so for instance if a woman is breastfeeding a child she's getting a hormone hit that makes her feel great in her head and some women actually get addicted to these hormone hits but then how come women abandon their children they give them up for adoption I'm sorry, this is, this is excuse making on your part. Guys giving, given a bottle to feed to the kid, even if it's their own child and they think, oh, isn't he cute, isn't he cute? And they love the child. They're still not getting the hormone hit that their wives would be getting. Um, so they don't enjoy the task as much. And it's difficult to persuade people to do stuff that they just don't enjoy very much. Um, even if you can argue they don't enjoy the task as much, that doesn't mean they don't enjoy the task. And it's safe. A lot of guys would do that. Why, why do you think there's no house husbands? Basically, Lindy Beige. Because women do, do not take care of men. A woman doesn't go out to work and come home and have a man who's just doing the house cleaning. Looking after the baby. She doesn't want that. Men get deselected if they try it. Um, the kibbutz is an interesting experiment. In kibbutzes in Israel, uh, they gave boys and girls absolutely identical treatment from day one, exactly the same education and so forth. And it was entirely up to those people when they grew uh, older to choose what they wanted to do. And it was thought that this experiment would lead to both sexes doing almost all the tasks and Interestingly, the reverse happened. When people were given absolute perfect choice of what they ended up doing, they actually divided along sex lines more than in mainstream society, interestingly. So all the jobs that were dangerous, all the jobs that involved being outdoors an awful lot, uh, heavy lifting and so forth, ended up being done by men. And all the people who ended up looking after kids and working in the library and so forth, uh, they're all women. Right. Yeah, but you, you missed the point there. Uh, if you had said like mechanics and let's say carpenters. Yeah, men are interested in that, but they, they don't wanna work dangerous jobs because they'd like to be in dangerous jobs. Look at yourself, Beige, what do you do? Are you a lumberjack? No, you're doing this right now. You're in a nice, safe environment on YouTube, just like I prefer. And there are all kinds of guys would be gladly be librarians 
if it was if it wasn't for the fact that women wouldn't have anything to do with them. If you're a male librarian, you're you're low status, and women avoid you like the plague. This is why men do these things. Not all, but you know what I mean. It was a it was a very very strong, clear division along sex lines. Um, now, one of the reasons that men do dangerous things is that men are expendable. Uh, yeah, sorry guys, but well, we are. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Society would collapse if enough men died off. Men aren't expendable. You're mistaking men, uh, society not caring about men with men being actually expendable. <laughs> Half the men in a tribe died. The tribe could bounce back. I mean, the remaining men could fertilize all the women. There'd be just as many kids the next generation. The Who's going to look after those children? Who's going to do all the dangerous jobs and hard labor? And defending the tribe from, you know, outsiders. Sorry, you're just wrong. Population would bounce back, yeah, everything would be fine. If a tribe lost half its women, it's not going to bounce back from that very quickly, is it? The, the next generation is going to be much smaller. And what if... What are you talking about? It would have to be a lot smaller than half. I come, Beige, I come from a family of nine children. Even if you had half women, you could turn around and they, they could have a child every year. They might even have trip, you know, triplets or, or twins. Within uh, like a few, like five years, you could have five times the people around. It lost half its women, but not half its men. So now there are loads more men. So half the men in the tribe now can't get a wife at all. Well, that's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? That's unrest and warfare and bloodshed and murder and nasty things. So Why do you care? The men are expendable, right? If men are just expendable, who cares if there was war and unrest? Right? Half the guys would get killed and everything would normalize. <laughs> But of course, I don't feel that way. I think guys would get along eventually. They'd, they'd come to terms. There are already a bunch of deselected men today. There's unrest, but nobody cares. So losing your women is much bigger blow for a society. So that's why women are the most valuable things in society. No. That would only be so if the only aspect of society was reproduction. You know, but it's not society. Human society is too evolved. We need men to keep the infrastructure going. Women don't want to do these jobs, so who's going to do it? Also, who's going to look after the children? You know, if the wife is at home, who's doing the labor to keep things going? And even if all that was untrue, do you not value your own life, Beige? Would you want someone to come up and say to you, okay, it's time for you to go because you're an expendable male. You're not expendable to yourself. I'm not expendable to myself. Are we not evolved beyond that now? And that's why you don't, for instance, protect women using other women, because that doesn't make any sense. We must protect our women from some danger from outside. Okay, put the women in the front line with... Oh, no, that's not going to work, is it? No, no. People don't approve... Really? So if half your men get sapped from a disease, how are you going to protect women? <laughs> but again, even if you lost half your women, your society would be all right of women fighting in the front line because if you're trying to protect the women in the society which is what you should do for the good of society then no no men do that because we can afford to we can afford to lose loads of them it doesn't matter they're just men they're replaceable they're expendable they don't really matter so much so uh, like you you don't matter so who cares if you died according to your own logic that's what that's one of the main reasons why men ended up doing an awful lot of dangerous stuff. 
Um, now, um, no, men had to because they society would toss them. That's why marriages. You could say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Though surely, women didn't always get the choice of whom they married. Surely, a lot of women had to, uh, you know, had to marry that guy there because their family told them to. And yes, that's true. A lot of um, a lot of marriages were arranged, and a lot of women didn't get the choice of whom they married. But by exactly the same token, neither did the guys. Those women were marrying guys. So for the guy, it was just as arranged a marriage as it was for the woman. So in fact, um, as for taking power out of the hands of women because these daughters are forcibly married off, because a daughter is a valuable thing. So if a family has this daughter, this resource, it can then. If daughters are so valuable, how come they offer dowries? Lindy Bays, you, you study history. Did you forget dowries? They, a lot of uh, families wanted to dump their daughters because she wasn't going to be working for them. She was a liability. She was a white elephant. Marry that daughter off this resource to another family and ha-ha, use her as, as a valuable bit of treasure, as, as a pawn in the game. So taking power away from her, you could say, yeah, but... She's still marrying a guy. And the, the guy she's marrying is going to do all the heavy lifting. So it's not really taking any power out of her hands. Women choose up, Lindy Beige. They have hypergamy. If she has a choice, she's not going to be a partner. She's going to choose a man of high status. guy didn't choose her so you know is, is that not sort of is, is the guy she marries is he not sort of equally a victim of that control by others uh, I would suggest that perhaps he is um, now people think of um, mistresses and so forth as powerless and wives as more powerful but in fact it seems that's not really the case. It's a bit counterintuitive, but I'll give you the example of George III. Now, George III was nice. He played the game properly. He loved his wife. He kept no mistresses, and he was a good, sound chap. And he disapproved of George's one and two, who went before him, who had loads of mysteries. Uh, mysteries? Mistresses is what I meant to say. I'm sure they had mysteries as well, but that's not to the point. And those mistresses became very powerful, and the women in court in general became, in George's one and two's time, very, very powerful, because think of it, a mistress has the ear of the king, direct line to the king. So if I, I want a royal commission for this, this thing that I, this project I have in mind, but I can't, I don't. What difference if they had power or not? These women were at court, right? There were, these mistresses were being taken care of. So they didn't, they didn't need that kind of power. But as you are pointing out, they, women have influence in any circles they're in. Have access to the king. Ah, maybe I have access to that woman who knows that woman, and she's a mistress of the king. So if I'm really nice to her, then maybe she'll pass the message to so-and-so. And the women in court got to know about or what everybody wanted. And of course, that's power. Knowledge is power. Influence is power. They could then say, okay, right, well, maybe I will have a word uh, with the king about this, this thing that you want, but what are you going to do for me? And they became very, very powerful. But in George III's uh, time, when suddenly, no, no, I won't be keeping any mistresses. We'll have no people keeping mistresses in court. Thank you. None of that, said George III. Boom. Suddenly, the women at court had far less power because people weren't keeping mistresses. Um so, you look, the guys who have want power in court, they got to work at it. They, they've got to work at it. These women don't. They just have to marry someone. That's why getting married to the right guy was so important. They didn't have to work at, for a living if they were high enough in court. Um, it's often thought that uh, the keeping of mistresses is to the advantage of men, but actually it seems it's mostly to the advantage of women. Well, duh. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, exactly. Those guys who had the mistresses, they had to be top dog, didn't they, Mindy? They had, they had to be born into it by luck or they had to work their way up. These women don't have to do that. So anyway, this is, I hope I debunked most of the points here. I'll leave it at that. <laughs>